how are distances measured and what are the standard units of measurement of distances now we will read about motion so there are many things which move around us some objects are known as at rest and some objects are said to be at motion so how can we know the difference between these which objects are at rest which objects are at motion so suppose this is a table this is not moving anywhere so we can say that this object is in rest position and whereas suppose we take the example of fan whenever we put on the current whenever we switch on the current the blades of the fan move so we can say that the blades of the fan are in motion same way birds birds do not sit at one place they fly from one place to another so birds are said to be in motion when they are moving from place to place so motion is nothing but some kind of change in the position of the object so if there is any change in the position of the object then the object is said to be in motion so take some examples of objects in motion say flying bird hands of a clock or moving ants suppose if you take ants if you take a white paper and you put some sugar crystals on that then after some time those sugar crystals attract ants then if you see the ants will be moving in an irregular motion on that paper so paper for eating that sugar so same way birds birds fly from one place to another so they are said to be in motion so hands of a clock so you know clock right so these inside things are known as the hands of a clock these two little like things so they are said to be in motion the clock is stable but the hands of the clock the two needles which show us the time are said to be in motion so this is an object in motion the hands of a clock whereas our house our table this total clock all these objects are at rest so that is the basic difference by which we can tell that objects are in rest and objects are in motion so motion is nothing but some kind of change in the position of the object now what are the types of motions there are three types of motions rectilinear motion or straight line motion then circular motion then we have periodic motion so anything which moves in a straight line is said to be in rectilinear motion so motion in a straight line is said to be rectilinear motion examples of rectilinear motions can be motion of vehicles on a straight road so when we are traveling by any vehicle a two wheeler or a four wheeler we always move in a straight direction so those vehicles are said to be in rectilinear motion next march past you know no soldiers do march past they also move in a straight line motion when they do parade on any independence day or republic day functions so all things all those things which move in a straight line are said to be in a rectilinear motion motion in a straight line is rectilinear motion next comes circular motion objects which move such that its distance from the fixed point remains the same objects move but the distance from a fixed point will remain the same see for example i can tell you the blades of a fan move when we switch on the fan but this is the center point of the fan so this from the center point the distance of all the blades will be same even though the fan is rotating the distance from the center point to the edge of the blade of the fan will be same object will be in motion the blades of the fan will move but the distance from the center point this is the fixed point to the blades will always be same so that is said to be a circular motion objects move such that its distance from a fixed point remains the same same way if you see this hands of a clock there is a center point here so the, this distance from all the point all the numbers will always be same so if you tie a stone with a thread and rotate it like this the stone will always rotate in a circular direction right so circular direction is circular motion then motion of blades of the electric fan as i told you this is a center fixed point and this these are the blades the distance from the center fixed point to the blades will always be same this fan is at rest position 
only the blades are moving so this blades are moving in circular motion round direction then motion of hands of a clock so when the time we are reading the time the clock always rotates clockwise round in direction and shows us the time then compass as we read earlier compass has two magnetic needles so compass will be at rest position but the needles will always move in a circular direction so that is circular motion next we have something called periodic motion objects repeat its motion after some time so if you have ever seen some houses will have pendulum clocks below the clock a stick like thing will be hanging which will rotate every 30 minutes or every 1 hour so those pendulum clock have a periodic motion because they rotate they move its direction every 30 minutes or 1 hour they make a noise indicating that it 1 hour is over so objects repeat its motion from its some time then branch of a tree moving to and fro whenever wind will blow the tree branches will move repeatedly that is happening so branch of a tree is said to be in periodic motion then we have wheel of a sewing machine same way people who stitch the clothes the machines will be at one place but the wheels of the machines will be rotating continuously in a round direction so the wheels of a sewing machine are said to be in circular motion then we have motion of a child on a swing so generally small children who are below the age of 1 will be put in a cradle like thing right so that cradle will like thing will be continuously moving like this to and fro so that is also said to be in periodic motion so these are the types of motions related to the topic motion so these are the things which we which move around us and these are the types of motions in which directions they move combinations of different types of motion till now we have read it we have studied that motions are rectilinear periodic as well as circular and we have seen examples separately for each type of motion but some objects exhibit a combination of two motions for example you know sewing machine where people stitch the clothes the wheel of the machine will be rotating in round direction that is circular motion whereas the needle the needle which stitches the clothes will be moving to and fro to and fro so wheel moves with circular motion and needle moves with periodic motion so in one sewing machine they are combinations of two different types of motions circular motion and periodic motion so this is how two different types of motions are occur in one single object next one more example is you know cricket ball many of you play with that rubber ball so what happens when you throw the ball like this on the ground the ball rotates and moves in a forward direction so when the ball rolls on the ground and rotates it is exhibiting a circular motion so ball goes in a round direction right as well as if with the when the ball is rotating it goes in a round direction along with that the ball also goes in a straight line so that is as it is moving forward in straight line it is said to be in rectilinear motion so when you throw a ball to any friend on a ground the ball rotates 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 and goes forward so in the process of rotation of the ball it is circular motion and the ball also travels in a straight line so that is rectilinear motion so there are two examples where we can say objects are in the combination of two different motions and you know the motion is everywhere around us if we see anything many things around us all the objects are said to be in motion for some examples are blood flowing in our body we know there are blood vessels arteries veins which transport the blood so the blood is also continuously flowing in our body so the blood is also said to be in motion then if you go from place to place via aeroplanes aeroplanes are also said to be in motion then butterfly for the purpose of food that flies from one flower to other flower so butterfly also is said to be in motion birds they travel from places countries to countries birds are said to be in motion then rivers rivers flow connecting many places many towns many cities rivers are said to be in motion then moon revolves around the earth right so moon is also in motion moon is also said to be in motion like this we can say that there is motion lot in motion in lot of things around us and we 
these motions can be measured with the help of distances. Like if we say that, if we say that this ball has rolled from this place to this place. Yeah. If we have started, starting point of the ball, ball has been marked as A and the ending point has been marked as B. So ball, the ball has traveled from place A to place B. So how can we tell the how much distance, how much motion the ball has traveled? With the help of measurement of distance. In meters we can say, in centimeters we can say, in kilometers we can say, if it is a law of distance. So that way motion and distance are always interrelated. The measurement of motion can be, tell, can be told in the form of how much distance it has traveled. So that is how motion and distance are interrelated. And this is the end of the chapter, motion and measurement of distance.